So, here's a thought. I've recently been catching up on Netflix's documentary series, Pretend It's a City. You know, the one where Martin Scorsese sits down with the great Fran Lebowitz to talk extensively about all of the quirks and the perks of New York. I'm the only person who's lived in New York as long as I have who has never made a correct real estate decision. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, I'm watching this and I'm finding it to be a great show. If you haven't seen it already, you should, it's a great late night watch. Anyway, I intend on making a video about it as soon as I'm done watching all of the 8 episodes. But never mind that for now. The reason I bring it up is because at one point, during their conversation about how taxi drivers, no pun intended, in New York are absolute maniacs, they mentioned this one particular scene from an old, smaller movie Scorsese made back in the 80s. I made the scene in that movie of yours, After Hours, where the cab like takes off. Yeah, that was, I, that's really from an actual cab ride. Yes, of course, it's from many with the flamenco, cameras. with the flamenco, that actually happened. Yeah, so they're talking about After Hours, a comedy slash satire starring Uncle Nicky from This Is Us. Now, this is a movie I've seen loads of times in the shelf of my neighborhood's long-gone video store. Growing up, going to that video store a couple times a week, I eventually entered my Scorsese phase and rented most of his movies, which made me realize two things. One is that I would never go nuts for a new Scorsese release, because after watching most of his filmography, I was disappointed at how much I didn't love it, and I really thought I would, though I do acknowledge that I'm talking about some of the greatest masterpieces in cinema's history. Take this one and stick it up your sister's ass. And the second thing it made me realize was that I enjoyed his smaller, less known movies much more than I did with the likes of Raging Bull, The Departed, or Gangs of New York. Now, I'm not trying to be a hipster here, I promise. This wins the internet while still being hashtag so bored. I do like his bigger, better known films, but I just cannot say that I love them. At least, not the way that I loved After Hours. A movie that slipped through me all of those years and that I finally came around to watching just a couple weeks ago. The only other two Scorsese movies I enjoyed myself watching as much as I did with this one were Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore and that's mostly because I have a thing for movies in the same line of boring slash depressing slash beautiful as Peter Bogdanovich's The Last Picture Show or Vin Vander's Paris, Texas. And I also really enjoyed Taxi Driver, though the recent disguised remakes do stain its memory a bit. <laughs> anyway, the first thing that struck me while watching After Hours was seeing this raw version of what New York City looked like back in the 80s. Because if you've been to New York recently, and by recently I mean the past 20 years, you'll know that the city Scorsese presents us with in this movie has nothing to do with the city we know nowadays. His New York City is more of a dreamlike version of the real thing. In many ways it's got the same underworld slash underground slash trashy slash romantic vibe of Stanley Kubrick's New York in Eyes Wide Shut. But if watching Eyes Wide Shut made me feel like I was looking into something I shouldn't be looking at all, something forbidden and wrong, but that I just couldn't keep my eyes from it. Scorsese's New York made me feel welcome to peeping. Don't get me wrong, the city here is just as trashy and dangerous as the one presented by Kubrick, perhaps even more dangerous. But the absurd journey that this one ordinary man embarks on, one late weeknight, while trying to get late, is so impossibly funny and surprising that I felt invited to watch and to laugh hard at the ludicrous plot, one crazy scene after the other. I'll probably get blamed for that. I mean, come on, we're talking about the story of this super vanilla guy called Paul Hackett, whose clothes and whose apartment walls and decoration match the same shades of beige as the whole office he works in. And the fact that Scorsese portrays him like that makes it clear to us that he is undistinguishable from any other bureaucrat stuck in a dead-end job that feels more like a prison. As a matter of fact, three minutes into the story, the production design has already told us all we need to know about this man, from his boring suit to his boring apartment. Here's a guy who punches the clock daily, then goes back home at the end of the day with nobody waiting for him and who's got no perspective in life. I mean, the highlight of his day is reading Henry Miller at his local diner, which is precisely the place where his adventure begins. Out of the blue, one regular weeknight as he manages to pick a strange girl's phone number, later deciding to call her and meet her at her friend's loft downtown. Now, downtown Manhattan means one thing to us nowadays, but back in the 80s apparently, the place was the stuff of Greek mythology, and being so, 
this guy's trip to get laid is no ordinary trip downtown. Instead, it's an odyssey. Where every single living and natural element will oppose, chase, threaten and antagonize him. From the wind that blows his money away out of the window of a cab. Uh, excuse me, I just... To infuriated mobs that chase him relentlessly. You would all sense the pressure here? This whole Odyssey aspect of the story becomes very clear right at the beginning of the movie when our modern day regular and boring protagonist enters the aforementioned taxi in order to get downtown. Because here, what may seem like an ordinary scene of a character in a cab is in fact an old artifice used in the classic epic stories and poems where the traditional hero gets transported from his world to the underworld, a place where he will face dire troubles. Through referential imagery and symbolism, we can understand that the taxi here evokes the remembrance of the boat of the dead souls that transports the recently perished from earth to hell, something that is sung about in many classical poems, from Homer's Odyssey to Dante's Divine Comedy. It really helps to imagine the scenery of this cab drive downtown, as in comparison to Delacroix's painting of Dante's Inferno. In both cases, we have the imagery of a hero making his passage to the underworld. Which is to say that there is definitely some irony in the way that Scorsese sees downtown Manhattan, to the point that he's even got his protagonist dropping to his knees and praying to God to let him out of that hellish of a place. Now, I'm not making any of this stuff up, I promise you. Scorsese himself talks about having those references from the Greek mythology inspiring him in the making of this movie. I guess I always loved the idea of, um, in Greek mythology, a uh, character going in the underground, going into Hades. And he has no money to pay the boatman to take him across the river, but he's always in danger of going across the river. I will take credit though for catching those references and inspirations coming from the Greek mythology before listening or reading anything about the movie. I promise you I did. I promise you I caught them just by watching the movie. I mean, hey, I've just finished reading the Odyssey that's got him out for something in life, right? But anyway, the best way I can find to describe this movie is to say that not even Odysseus, you know, the guy from the Greek mythology who spent 10 years of his life trying to get back home, fighting off monsters and gods. I am alive! Odysseus is alive! And you cannot stop me! Well, not even him would be able to make his way back home from a night out in Soho back in the 80s. Because from the get-go, the screenplay written by Joseph Minion turns downtown Manhattan into a modern and urban version of any mythological hero's nightmare. Much in the same way as James Joyce did with Ulysses, transporting the classical Greek epic told in the Odyssey to the streets of his contemporary Dublin. Now, don't go thinking I've read Joyce's Ulysses, because that short description right there is pretty much all I know about it. But anyway, Joseph Minion's script here feels very formulaic, you know, in the sense that it strictly obeys the narrative structure and basis of those same classic epic stories. You know what I'm talking about. It's the classic hero's journey, you know, telling the story of a man who is set on a path to accomplish something bigger than himself, an ultimate goal that will eventually lead him to redemption, all throughout his journey fighting off monsters and enemies that, once beaten, will prove his worth as a hero. The only catch here is that instead of fighting off monsters and gods in the underworld, our hero is actually a regular dude stuck in Soho, running away from leather-wearing punks and angry mobs that chase him relentlessly in ice cream trucks. <laughs> Though you do have the occasional Medusa turning people into statues. Lady, let me out of this thing. Now, you hear me? Let me out. But also, his ultimate goal is by no means some noble act of bravery, like saving a lady in distress. In fact, all he wants is to get back home safely. I really just want to go home. And if in the classic epics, the narratives come full circle when the hero accomplishes his deed in a cathartic moment, finally learning something of value about himself and about the world surrounding him, here, the brilliant irony of this hidden gem of a movie is that our hero learns nothing more than to stay away from Soho after hours. All in all, here is a movie worthy of an 8 out of 10. And hey, Chi Chong makes special appearances. See what happens when you pay for stuff? Somebody rips it off. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe for weekly content and make sure to leave a comment down below telling me what are some of your favorite Scorsese movies. See ya!